Hi. So today I will be asking, which is more important to you? The feeling of fulfillment or the seeming satisfaction of people knowing that you're number one? My name is Lauli Bitoy and today we'll be continuing on second place. You know, it's quite interesting to know that we we find that gratification when people acknowledge us as number one. Even though we're there and deep within ourselves, we know that we're not actually um, feeling fulfilled. We know that we're not actually where we really want to be. We're not doing the best we actually can because we're not really in the spot we're supposed to be in. I am coming from the perspective of there is absolutely nothing wrong with being number one. Don't get me wrong. Number one, you get to be the one wearing the thinking cap, you get to be the one uh, doing the decision making, doing the taking the front line, which is good. Someone has to do that. But not just that alone. Someone also has to be the one at the rear end. That's how it works. There is always a yin and a yang. There is always a black and a white. There is always the front and the back to every single relationship. Work, cordial, platonic, romantic, any. It always takes two or more costs. Let's consider being number two in a relationship. Like I said yesterday, being number two doesn't mean you're inferior, doesn't mean you're any less. It simply means that's the role you've assumed to play. And sometimes, even without intending it, the roles could switch. Yeah, the number two could inadvertently be playing number one role without even knowing because sometimes the number one just has no idea what to do and the number two has been in the back so been able to get a clearer perspective of what's going on and can always step in as backup when the number one just has no idea what to do at work we've seen sometimes where the person who was considered not to be seemingly important as save the day has been able to pref- has been able to prefer the best solutions that would actually save the organization. It's commonplace practice sometimes. And we just have to take our eyes off that number. Yeah, I said yesterday, there is always an organogram, there is always an hierarchy of system that works. Alright? It's spoken sometimes and it's unspoken other times. True. But we've seen subordinates outperform their so-called supervisors and superiors. The most important thing to you that's what would determine which path you're taking. Are you more concerned about the status, the, pers- the perception people peak of whether you're the boss or you're the subordinate? Are you better concerned about what people will think of your level, of your status? Or are you more concerned about the feeling of fulfillment, the feeling of, or the sense of achievement, the the sense of being the best version of you that you can be? Is your is your measure of competition other people or yourself? Is your measure of being fulfilled? tied to 
yourself or to what other people say or what other people expect. This is what will actually determine what matters to you the most. My encouragement is for us to actually look beyond what people say, what people expect and actually look inwards. Because of this positional status that we seem to chase, we have so many round pegs in square holes, so many triangular stakes in round spots. You need to first ask yourself, understand yourself, be truthful to yourself about what's most important to you. And once you do that, you can actually begin to walk in that direction. You can begin to shake off the shackles that the environment has actually laid on us about having to always be number one. You may find yourself being number one in some certain settings in your life. And in other areas, you find yourself being number two. You may naturally have the gift of just always being number two. There ain't no crime in that. And you could find yourself being number one every single time. That's awesome. But the most important thing, it's not about which position you're actually occupying. It's about how well you can actually perform, you can actually function. How fulfilled are you operating in that position? How comfortable are you? And yes, I know that there is a school of thought that you need to dare yourself, you need to push yourself, you need to evolve yourself, you don't have to stay in your comfort zone. Beautiful. I couldn't agree anymore. Yeah, but it's not an excuse for incompetence because more often than not, the reason why we try to, we try to um, cross borders is because we are trying to, we're trying to please other people then we are actually trying to expand our own capacity. So your motive should not be the position. Your motive for trying to actually cross boundaries and actually perform in the roles of number one should not be because you're trying to make yourself look good to others. Like I said yesterday, the best route for you to become a number one is for you to have actually served as being number two. Because when you eventually become a number one, you will understand, you would have learned what it means to be a number two. And you can carry that knowledge along to being a number one. And whoever is going to be your number two can actually get help from you being the best number two they can be. So yes, you will eventually become a number one if you do aim for it, if you do dream for it in some certain settings. So, it will come. Other times, you just have to be the best version of number two. You can be evolve yourself to the best possible us you can as number two and you'll be amazed how much you would have transformed yourself so being number one or being number two oh wonderful the most important part is you deciding is it about fulfillment or is it about attaining a status so people can actually acknowledge you? My name is Laulu Bitoye and this has been Chris 516. Hope you find which works for you.
and hope you begin to make better choices. Have a wonderful time ahead.